Greetings and salutations, Earthlings. Welcome to another epi. It is League Unlock here and Mark here with you goodies. A little bit of domestic power rankings. LCS, LEC has returned. LCK's got a little bit of a shakeup as well. But of course, we start with that final week of regular season action in the LCS. And this was definitely uh, a messy one in the Super Week to wrap things up for spring. Super Week rolls around the final one to close out the spring split. Bring us right into the playoffs for the LCS. And yes, we listed out a lot of demands heading into the final week. The things that we wanted to see from the top contending teams of the LCS. What we wanted to see from the teams towards, you know, that playoff bubble to separate and show that they are one of these teams. A lot of them didn't in the LCS is the short answer for the Super Week. And listen. You've heard pros. We've talked about this a bit. The power level in the LCS, I think you've had the ceiling pulled down a little bit and the basement has been pulled up. So we got a lot more teams kind of crammed in a similar spot, which is why Immortals, even at 8th, they're not terrible. They've been at the bottom pretty much the whole split, but they've gotten wins against some of the better teams. This week, it was Cloud9. They were coming away with the upset, but far and away, the most disappointing on this list is the drop for NRG down to seven. Even though Shopify isn't in playoffs, they beat NRG this week and honestly looked better. It's crazy. Number one, Immortals, the, the, the comment about them at the bottom and the rest of where the power is for the LCS, it's a good sign because they're the bottom team and you don't want to scrap everything, never see it again type of thing. You know that there is potential there. There's stuff to work on. There's progress to be made. Good to see that at the very bottom of the LCS. Not good to see NRG near the bottom of the LCS, given they are the summer champions of last year. A quarter finalist at the world championship last year pretty much the same returning lineup arguably an upgraded lineup returning to this rift didn't show it this weekend was a big part of it and this was the demand this was the list laid out for nrg and what was ahead of them a relatively okay still some difficulties in this final week but not the craziest of strong final weeks and they didn't deliver once in this final week for trying to get us across that finish line, get through the playoff type of run. They limped in by the biggest of margins. And even going back to the week before, uh, you heard contracts talking about it, other people talking about it. They got a couple of wins that they really had no business winning. Some miraculous Baron steals out of him. So this slump goes back a couple of weeks now for NRG, which means all-time low in terms of confidence for this squad heading towards playoff which again probably means they'll go for a deep run back to finals but uh five spot and one of the teams that was probably the most memed for their roster is team dignitas and listen last week of regular season they beat team liquid they have a super close matchup against FlyQuest. get a win against nrg in that tiebreaker i think Overall, pretty much regardless of how playoffs end up going, Dig surpassed expectations already this split. Oh, absolutely surpassed the expectations I think either you or I had, never mind the whole community as a whole, when you're looking at what the things people thought was going to go on with this Dignitas roster. They have found a little bit of success as far as where it has been in these tough matchups, as you mentioned, you know, pushing FlyQuest the way that they did in this super week leads you to believe that this is the Dignitas team that is going to be a tough out when it comes to these LCS playoffs because I think nobody is really under the impression that you're going to go on this full-on run, right? That's not the expectation still, even with the expectations of, this, of the season passed already. You're looking at them being a tough knockout in one of these rounds for these playoffs, and I think a team that can win a round through these playoffs and be an interesting option in the playoffs. Absolutely, especially if teams are not showing them the respect that they deserve, especially those solo laners and uh, Tomo has been popping off for them in that bot lane. Team Liquid in the four spot, very difficult team to rank. I feel like for playoffs, they're either APA and Yawn kind of shore things up, stop feeding a little bit, and this team is going deep, maybe all the way to finals, or they don't sort things out and they're not winning a game in playoffs. 
Yeah, and then one of the important things to look at with Team Liquid is they are one of our longer uh, game times in the LCS. When you're looking at for where they're able to close things so out. So many Ziggs games, that's why. <laughs> That's definitely one of them, and certainly, you know, okay to have your pocket pick, to have your signature champion. But with someone like APA and entering this year, one of the things that we needed to see was that expansion of that champion pool, of where you are comfortable, where we have confidence on seeing you pop off. I don't think we have quite seen that in the champion pool, and that's one of those things that I think the attention is going to be put right back on in that spotlight as we move towards best of series, when you're focusing in on that pick and ban, it's not necessarily, you know, what we've rolled through in the spring split of the live patch situation where you're rolling through each new weekend. It's something new, something fresh, and you're rolling it in. Maybe you got something prepared. Teams are going to have a lot more in the tank ready for these playoffs and knowledge and everything else. So you got to be prepared for it. Someone like APA and Team Liquid, I think that they are a target for some of these teams in the playoffs. APA, probably the guy who benefited the most from Azir being banned the last little bit. But rumor is it might be back around for playoffs. So he's probably hoping it's not. But it just might be. Uh, 100 Thieves jump over C9 after their shaky 2-1 and one wrap up. But here's the thing where it's difficult. You're going off the regular season body of work, especially this last Super Week. No question, 100 Thieves put a better performance on the Rift than Cloud9. You preview a best of five between the two, and I think pretty much everybody is still favoring Cloud9 just because of the names and the potential for this squad. It's something to be said about what has been accomplished by this 100 Thieves team, and specifically, again, the list demands we we put out to teams in this final Super Week on what they could do to provide you that boost in confidence towards playoffs. Cloud9, not checking those. Those are X's in those boxes, not check marks for sure. And 100 Thieves, they're the ones picking up those checks, looking great in the LCS but you head towards playoffs, you head towards a best of series against these teams and you stack them up and it is almost impossible to get yourself on board with 100 Thieves in this situation given that you have seen good things from them, but best of ones, best of one, best of one. Now we're moving into a situation where things are gonna be a little bit more complex. You're gonna have a little bit more room to express and have opportunities as Cloud9. And I think that eventually is gonna be too much for the 100 Thieves to handle. Two rookies heading into their first playoff, obviously against the experienced Cloud9 roster. But listen, Sniper might have some spicy picks when a best of five rolls around. And matching up against Fudge, that's a big avenue where 100 Thieves can definitely take advantage of in this series. It's possible. And I think, as you mentioned earlier, if Azir is in the, in the rotation, someone like Quid is very much one of those players that we've got in the LCS that likes to use that champion. I know, I know Jojo Pions plenty capable on the Azir as well. But if you give that one into the champion pool for quid, I think that's boosting up the chances of the 100 Thieves upset. Both of those squads are still fighting for that top spot because it is FlyQuest who holds on. They secure the first seed, still looking like the best, most consistent squad, despite the bot lane being, I'm not going to say shaky, but not up to the level of the rest of the squad over the last little bit. We've still seen they have a solid grasp of the meta inspired and Bwipo have fit in seamlessly returning to the pro scene you, they've still been 14 games across body of work most consistent squad was FlyQuest FlyQuest coming on through and probably out of the list of demands that we made to teams for this super week one of the ones that maybe gets the 50% or 45% all close to a passing grade situation and that's why they find themselves holding through that top spot in the LCS, as you laid out, Whippo inspired, throw Jensen in that mix. Those veterans have been very stable, very good options for this team. This split, you look at the bottom lane and you know that the power and potential is there for them. It hasn't quite come through in the same type of way that you're looking at the successes of the other parts of this team. And that's where you look in playoffs and you're wondering about whether you get the flag quest that's going to have that full power level to represent as the number one team in the LCS right now. I'm hoping for it, and I know FlyQuest is hoping for it, and certainly the producers of the Drive segment on the LCS are hoping for it. Otherwise, it's another curse down the line for Mr. Masu. And you can't... Then they gotta stop making these videos. No eyes on, no Drive videos, just no behind-the-scenes content for any 
of the LCS squads. Week one LEC now in the books for us. And unfortunately, some familiar looking teams towards the bottom of the week one power rankings, except for in that little eight spot team BDS, who had that marquee head to head matchup against Rogue, which might have been the ugliest game uh, of the weekend because Rogue has a good early game. They win a fight, they get an advantage, and proceed to do absolutely nothing with it and this is the only win bds picked up in week one i think everybody can be in agreement for this bottom three of the lec without question to me i mean maybe maybe you've got them in somewhat of a different order but it's got to be these three teams i have a lot of confidence in saying that from what we have seen this past week for rogue it's a tough situation because i think heading into this one you know, someone like myself that was in favor for the changes, what Rogue was going to be making this split, hope to see a little bit more out of it. And I think that maybe it's going to be something where we got to let the runtime be there. But as much as I always like to say after the first week, give it, give it some time or whatever you view, we know that always comes back to bite you in the LEC, especially running through these quick weeks that we have for these short splits before you get to that knockout part. You don't have time. To get time in the lec and for someone like rogue you're gonna have to figure it out really quick yeah i mean owen three is really shooting yourself in the foot to start case in point the number seven squad from last year k corp i don't think they even got to seven at any point last year in winter so already climbing with a one and two start which doesn't sound great but you have the caveat that they did play fanatic and g2 already in week one so getting the difficult schedule and hey they had a 3K gold lead and a really solid early game against G2, but like Rogue, they didn't really know what to do with it. I don't think this is going to fully meet the expectations or, 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 you know, quota that needs to be met for the blue wall to be happy or to keep raising up the fan levels in the LEC. But this is good enough uh, to when you're looking in comparison to how they started out that spring split and where you can go from here as you laid out Fnatic G2, cross those ones off. You're going to have some better matchups ahead of you in these next couple of weeks. And you've already given yourself a better launching point than you had at any point during the spring split. So this has to still be looked at as a, as a win for k -Cole. And there's, you know, improvement across the board. Saken looked pretty decent. Upset looked much more confident uh in that bot lane and was able to actually make some plays to get ahead so much better start again one and two low bar for k corp uh, but then what we were getting out of the winter split we were singing the praises of vitality after their 2-0 start looking good looking clean and then they proceed to get absolutely dumpstered by sk gaming in the third game of the week it's it's the classic Monday episode curse coming Ooh. on through for the LEC as they still roll through games. You can give all the praise, all the reads you got from the weekend and then have it all busted up on the Monday. And that's how it went for this Vitality team. I still think that what we have seen from them has been more than good enough that you're going to have a better edge on them as we move into week two of this uh, spring split for the LEC think that we're going to be talking about this Vitality team and what they're moving and how they're moving up the rankings. Keep an eye on them. I got it on Vitality right now. Yeah, and yeah, just just a bad day uh, on that SK one. It was it was a little rough, but still feel like a decent team. SK could quietly be 3-0. and They kind of threw a game against Mad Lions to kick things off. So that's why they're deserving of that top three spot. Mad Lions, despite having a worse record uh, than Vitality now, is a spot ahead of them. Obviously, still feel like you're taking a little bit from what they were in winter, and they themselves threw a game against Giant X that they, nine times out of ten, are not going to lose. And I think on paper, you get a rematch. You're feeling confident in them taking down uh, all those squads below them. Team Heretics, after their first loss, rally off two in a row. And my God, is there anyone more untiltable? Than Mr. Wonder in the top lane. He's getting camped by one, two, three, four members. Doesn't matter if he's top lane, bot lane, he's 0-3, ends up having a huge impact in team fights. I don't understand it. I'm, I don't get how this is working out, but I love to see Wonder playing like that in the LEC and getting that success for Team Heretics. A team that I think, uh, you know, when you're looking through at these other things that we've talked about with them, with the former G2 players, 
Having Wonder pop off like that is a wonderful sign for this team in this early part of it and where they can get to, because I think right now, yes, this wasn't what we saw, but if you invest resources into Wonder, if you look back in the last split, I think that's part of what went wrong for this Heretics team was trying to just go, okay, weak side it up, my man, that's that, you know, that's where you were on G2 because of all these times you had resources going other places. Part of that success on G2 was Wonder playing a strong side. If you go back, and I know this is when it wasn't the most successful era of G2, he certainly wasn't playing weak side when Reckless was on the team and stuff was going on. So this is a player more than capable of it. And I think for this team Heretics, it could be that avenue to provide more firepower right now and more trust in a veteran player. Despite getting that head-to-head -head win, Heretics against Fnatic, still got Fnatic ahead of them. You play a rematch, you're still favoring Fnatic. They had a 5K gold lead. Lots of throws this weekend in the LEC. Fnatic should have had control of that game, but still overall feel like they are a slightly stronger team than Heretics right now. And G2, the only undefeated squad. They have a bad early game against K Corp, but uh, so far already looking uh, a few bars ahead of the rest of the LEC. Familiar picture in the LEC, of course, those three that I, I said everyone's going to have more or less at the bottom. Well, I'm pretty darn sure everybody's got these two at the top of the table in the LEC. Consistently, the two Classico members, G2 and Fnatic, rolling on in. This is one of those ones you look at that head-to-head -head and what we have seen from them. Of course, the impressive nature of G2 and everything that they bring to the table. Fnatic has been very good in this opening week, and I think one of the big signs for me has been Razork in the jungle. I think that this is a continued story that's been going on, talking about how he's playing, how Humanoid is playing, and I think the big story right now is rolling through with Razork's performance and where he can lead for this Fnatic team. I think that's where you gotta be putting your eggs in the basket for them, because right now, looking at them with G2, yes, I love Yike, and Yike's got some interesting things in his champion pool, but right now, the power that Razork is bringing to the jungle. That aggression, I think that is an edge that Fnatic has when you're looking at it against G2. And unfortunately for Fnatic, there's just not many edges you got against G2, so you gotta push the ones you've got. LCK side of things, it continues to be an absolute free fall for the Kwong Dong freaks. Right after everyone's hyping them up in the last three weeks, their only win is a game three victory against Nongshim Red Force. That includes back-to-back -back losses to the bros and a 2-0 drubbing at the hands of DRX, which means both of those squads are jumping over them. And it's really unfortunate because there's no real fun way or positive way to slice it up what's been going on for KDF. It has been a lot of very poor performance, a lot of poor decision-making coming across on the rift. So it's not just about whatever strength of schedule that you've rolled into at this point. You had to be a part of the strong enough group that is a cut line for the playoffs in the LCK, proving that they are certainly not that cut line for the playoffs. I want to give a, a, this, in this bottom section of the LCK shout out to Nongshin because they have our team that is that bottom level and quite deservingly so. But still, they have in the past couple of weeks taken a lot of teams to these three games, the full max in the series. And that's saying a heck of a lot more than what we've been seeing from KDF. And heck, man, even throw Fear X into that one, even though they've survived the, the hell gauntlet of the LCK schedule. The nine game series losing streak uh, for Fear X as they go down to that number nine spot. But yeah, if you're breaking this into tiers, as we kind of tend to do in the LCK, you get to that top five and you have that trio of solid locked in playoff squads when you have d plus hanwa and kt and i think all of them are at pretty comparable levels it was kind of business as usual for most of them this week hanwa gets smashed by gen g follows it up by beating uh anyone else in the lck not named t1 or gen g oh man in this quick top five segment i gotta give him a, a shout out i know we're gonna be talking about hanwa life bdd and KT. I got to give him the shout out because I have been Bounce hard. I've been I've been ragging on my boy. I have been asking for him to step up for the team and he absolutely did. This past, past week some mega Oriana performances and clutch uh, ultimates coming on through. Got to give him his roses on that one. But yes, above him is Hanwha Life right now and where they represent in the LCK and again one of these territories within this top five that we have in the region where you're looking at them and saying, yes, you're giving you the advantage over a squad like KT, even with KT 
maybe evening it out, finding that bottom of this, you know, runaway roller coaster run. Hanwha Life is right above them in that next tier up, but not necessarily enough confidence in them ahead when you're looking through at the squads like a T1, like a Gen G, even like a D plus Kia. And, you know, now the tier gets separated, has been separated between the top two. But, man, Gen G really sent a message to the rest of the LCK this weekend. And now, you know, 14 series into the split, they might be looking to set another game score record that they were setting just last year. They've only got four game losses all year. It's just bonkers to have record breaking after record breaking and a potentially another record breaking type of team in the LCK and to have Gen G at the center of it pretty much two, three times now. That's something to be said about the power that they bring to the LCK. And they absolutely sent a devastating message to the rest of the league. This one with their win against T1. They said, you got someone like Faker? You got a superstar elite mid laner? Well, we're locking him down. And our guy Chovy, he's going to be right there. Oh, you've got an amazing bottom lane. We're taking you on 2v2. I don't care what you're cooking. We got you. And you think that you've got a monster in the top side? Welcome to Keen, and he's got a little assistant from your boy, Canyon, coming on through Gen G. Fantastic stuff from them. Big time flexing on the rest of the LCK and even T1. And obviously, not actually sweating are a 12 and 2 T1 that have six total losses. Yes, they got smashed, but they're still one of the best teams in the world, so not actually any type of sweat or panic out of them. They're going to need to pick themselves off of the floor. That's the way it is. And they got to dust themselves off after getting this knockdown by Gen G type of situation. It's one that things a lot more than the one to open the season. Even if you had all the hopes for that one type of situation, you could brush it off in so many other type of ways. This one stings and leaves that mark a little bit more. Getting that, uh, you know, unequivocal 2-0 smackdown from your rival. I think T1's going to pick themselves up and, and get back at it. Still leaps and bounds ahead of the rest of the LCK are both Gen G and T1. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties. Thanks for hanging out as always, and we'll catch you on that flippity flip.